right. Moving. Moving. All right, right here. That's good. All right, I got it. All right, you're gonna be okay. I know. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to actually do a little interview here and a demonstration on how to uh, set up this uh, abdominal tourniquet. And Dr. Schwartz is actually the inventor. Larry, this, actually, this device was actually invented by myself and uh, Dr. John Krauschorn, who um, is a, a part-time faculty with us uh, um, at uh, Georgia Regents University. And the idea of this originally was to be able to stop um, uh, injuries that occur in the groin um, at the uh, junction where body armor ends and the extremities uh, um, come off. And what we were seeing in, in combat is injuries from ballistic uh, missiles, either bullets or blast injuries, extending through the very um, um, proximal femoral arteries uh, into the iliac arteries, and, and the soldiers were bleeding to death on the battlefield. So the idea is to be able to place this um, device over the uh, umbilicus and what it has is a wedge-shaped bladder that when inflated actually um, externally cross clamps the aorta as well as the uh, inferior vena cava and so you effectively stop all uh, blood flow uh, to the lower extremities. Okay. Now what we've actually found over time is that this device can actually be used in other ways in addition to the abdominal placement. Um, it can be used directly over a femoral injury rather than placing it uh, over the, um, the, the aorta. Or we've actually had um, uh, one uh, gunshot wound into the axillary artery that uh, we were unable to get, uh, Dr. Krauschorn actually had this case, they were unable to get a tourniquet around uh, the injury because it was so um, proximal. They actually put the abdominal tourniquet on in this configuration across the upper extremities and were able to get complete hemostasis uh, wow. of the upper extremity injury. What, what, what are your thoughts then about like pelvic fractures and, and major pelvic bleeding? Do uh, you think there's a role for that? I mean, that's kind of what I was fascinated with after doing a little reading on it. Well, I think that's really kind of the, the uh, logical next step for utilization. The device was really designed for penetrating trauma, but when you think about it, um, the unstable pelvic fractures, this would really be ideal for. Traditionally, our approach has been to try to stabilize the pelvis, but with this approach, you're actually stopping all blood flow to the pelvis. So if you have an unstable injury, it can certainly provide that bridge to um, either uh, um, uh, IR intervention um, or even potential um, um, going to other invasive means such as Reboa and then for uh, operative control. Okay, so um, now we, you know, when we do an open thoracotomy, we cross clamp the aorta. I mean, this would be a little bit lower than where you normally cross clamp the aorta, but um, I guess you would still preserve your kidneys and your superior mesenteric artery and, and all that. And so, and I don't know that this is a bad thing is to let blood flow still go on to the kidneys and the mesentery. Exactly, and I think that needs to be um, um, studied. studied. And yeah. I think another area to be studied is even um, the use of the device in, uh, in CPR. If you're able to isolate the blood flow at the aortic bifurcation, essentially when you do each uh, compression of CPR, rather than perfusing the lower extremities, you should be um, increasing the blood flow to the brain uh, by that amount that would ordinarily be going to the lower extremities. So that's another area that I think um, would be a, yeah. a fascinating area for further research with the device. That's a, that's a great idea. Okay, so, so so I can actually show you how to do the um, okay, the, cool. the placement of the device in the aortic. Are placement. there any are there any residents running around that uh, yeah. have volunteered? Dr. Troncone, why don't you step in here? <laughs> hey now. Dr. Tronkel, you're okay with being on YouTube and Of course. <laughs> this is all volunteer. <laughs> <laughs>
So to place the device, you um, run the device under the casualty, and then it has a, a snap buckle that will be tightened. And then So we get it as tight as possible before inflation. So what we do now, what is then do? tighten the windlass that this further tightens the device. Okay. Once that's tightened, then we would inflate the bulb. This is just a simple... Let's watch Dr. Troncone's face here for a minute. So, and what you do is you inflate... <laughs> now his face is getting redder. Does that mean there's more blood flow <laughs> right up to So we're there. <laughs> okay, so we're at, at the inflated uh, um, up to green. We'll take it down. Well, we actually um, did a study looking at this, and I think Troncone was in uh, one of our... Um, <laughs> oh, oh, come on. You're being a little dramatic there. So um, the, the pain actually from some subjects was as low as uh, three uh, uh, centimeters on a, uh, a 10 centimeter scale and as high as 10 for other subjects as far as the discomfort for placing it. Okay. I always, I've had it placed on me many times and I always kind of look at it as and say it's, uh, it beats bleeding to death. Yeah, well, absolutely, so, um, absolutely. So it's a, um, and this is really kind of the shape of the, the bladder as it is in, in place. Okay. Is there any role for, uh, um, you know, we talked about pelvic fractures. You put a, you put a um, pelvic binder on there, and you put this on here, and that would stop the blood flow on someone who's really hypotensive. Uh, what about someone who's got a splenic and a liver liver lack? I mean, this is way too low, is it, or or is it, or would it it's, would it do it, some I binding? Think it would probably be contra Well, yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily contraindicated, but it. Um, it, it would likely increase the blood pressure, and if you have a, you know, it, it kind of comes down to the question of uh, um, hypotensive resuscitation versus yeah. trying to get the pressure up right away. It, it's really designed to stop hemorrhage distal to, to the device uh, location, um, and if we're, um, you know, using it for other purposes where it may increase blood pressure, or increased blood flow, I think those areas need to be studied further. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can still see an element of, of tamponade. You're just basically uh, tightening, wrapping around that belly and holding, pulling that liver together and all that, but I can see your, your other point there. What's the F FDA, what's, um, what's the story on that? Sure, it's a uh, um, FDA cleared for um, um, for use in, in all the sites that I, I showed you, both uh, uh, aortic placement, uh, groin placement, as well as axillary placement. Okay. Um, so it's cleared for use in the U.S. and it has a CE mark for use uh, um, overseas. It's being uh, used in, uh, um, in in the U.S. military as well as uh, multiple foreign militaries as well. Okay. So tell me about the military experience with it. Has there been? I know there's a couple. There's at least one or two case reports. On exactly. Um, the, there was actually a, a published case report in the uh, Journal of Special Operations Medicine where um, a, um, a casualty was really um, at the point where they were starting to code and the, the device was placed as kind of a last-ditch effort. Um, after placement, hemorrhage uh, um, and, and the, the injury was a bilateral amputation from a uh, um, from an explosion. Okay. And an the, IED. the casualty was um, um, stabilized, um, hemorrhage was controlled, and the, the patient actually had a very good outcome. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So um, there, there's a, a growing um, a number of case reports of, of use. Okay. There's actually a case report in the Annals of Emergency Medicine. It was of, done recently? Yes, it's a, a recent report okay. of a, um, uh, an individual using just manual compression over the um, uh, over the aorta to uh, control uh, hemorrhage from a, a penetrating pelvic injury. So um, this is something that's really been talked about in the um, special forces uh, uh, kind of um, uh, medic training for years. But we're starting to see case reports in the civilian literature using just the, the use of external compression. Now the nice thing is with a device like this, once it's placed, it's very stable. You don't have the, the you know, um, um, 
it's much more controlled. You, you don't come off of the aorta when you're moving the casualty and that sort of thing. Now, you were actually in the military and you were special forces? Well, I spent uh, uh, um, uh, 10 years in the Army and, and most of that time was supporting uh, special operations. And was there any specific patient that stimulated this concept? Well, actually, kind of conceptually, there, there was a, one casualty that I remember seeing, and actually it was in a civilian trauma center in uh, uh, Oakland, California, that was um, shot with a shotgun into the pelvis. And, and it was one that we um, had packed the wound and were trying to get control. But even with the best wound packing we could do, the casualty um, um, ended up uh, dying. And it just seemed that there should be a better way to get control of those injuries. And that's where kind of way, as we, um, um, we, we had to actually some, uh, a, a study that was done at uh, uh, Georgia Regents Medical Center where um, we studied, uh, well actually I wasn't involved in the study, but the investigators studied the amount of pressure that it actually takes to uh, externally occlude the aorta. Uh -huh. And it came down to uh, somewhere about 120, 130 pounds of pressure. And that's when we kind of uh, got the idea we could probably recreate that with a pneumatic device um, that, that would work uh, um, very effectively more than, uh, um, than placing a knee in someone's abdomen or trying to, to hold their uh, a fist over the, uh, the abyssal aorta. In the movie Black Hawk Down, wasn't there a fatality. Yeah, that was ex that's really the exact injury that this is uh, uh, meant to control, and and it really doesn't necessarily fix anything. But what it does is it allows you a bloodless field to be able to uh, get better control, either in the operating room or even in the field, um, um, to get better wound packing or to be able to um, um, to to ligate vessels potentially. Oh, it's going to get real tight. Real tight. Got to go to green. We got to go to green, okay? Hold on. Here it comes. We're going to get up here. All right. Red green. Let's go.